church and to all my father's children. It's good to be in the house this morning. Yeah. It's going to take me a minute. I want y'all to get the word. It's a very short message. I ain't going to let you bring your greens, your roast, your chicken. I don't know if that's on the I won't be long, but I got to do something to keep you here because I don't want y'all to get overexcited and then you want me to preach and not pass So you got to stand up to two times. It says, whosoever loves money never has enough. Y'all have enough? Kind of. Kind of? I can't even talk to you. <laughs> yeah. And whosoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. And this truth me.
extra at four hours on the hand. Or what? It does, it does. I'm just, I was just skipping time. I, I, know, I just had to read that scripture here. I, I read it. I brought a different Bible with me this morning, so when I read that, hmm, that's, that's different. But let's just look at 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, beginning in verse 6, coming from the International Version, and it says, But, but God, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothes, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolishes, foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. The people eager for money have wondered. But some people eager for money have wondered from the faith and pierced themselves with many. So by now, I guess y'all feel or understand we're going to be talking about y'all's money this morning and how you feel about your money. And, and, and if I get on the toes this morning, I, I'm not going to be sorry. I'm not going to even apologize. For all the past couple of months, a friend of mine has been teaching on the Fridays of the Spirit of Bion about being bonafide. Bonafide definition, I looked it up, and I had a kind of weird thought of what bonafide meant, and I looked it up the other day and because I thought I was going to share about being bonafide, but, but I, 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 I had too much time on my hand the past 10 days, 10 or 12 days. Ten of them on the bottom of the road, and and I was the whole time thinking about what would I tell the people, what would God have me tell the people. So I was thinking about being more modified is like being authentic, genuine, being for real. And, and I thought I was going to talk to y'all about being for real Christians, modified, authentic. And then I thought, well, I don't know, I, I, I ain't got time to really. Get off deep into that. But, but it, it ties all in. Because when you're a bona fide Christian, you don't get all excited and all tied up about your own. Probably most of us ain't bona fide. Most of us are continuous. And I, 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 I know y'all saying, well, Pastor, you've been on my toes already. Well, I'm sorry. Because when I was my study about being bona fide, I'm still going to talk to y'all about, about the money. I learned by if I'm going to be qualified, I got to let my light, what the Bible says, I am a light. So I got to let my light shine where? Into the dark places. Because I'm supposed to be qualified. I'm supposed to be. And it's up to you to make your own decision, but I'm supposed to be qualified. Then I understood something else. It said that we are, us Christians, or we are the salt of the earth. Salt will be salty, right? And it did tell us that if, if the salt becomes uh, wet and it gets loose and flavor, it's good for nothing. The Bible says it's good not even for the dawn. Either. Okay, so so I don't want to be like that. So then I, I was just thinking, I was just thinking, I was just thinking. Uh, why is it that Pastor Kent shies away from certain topics? And I won't, I'll just go along. Yeah, okay, that sounds all right. Sounds all right. Why do I do that when I'm a bona fide Christian? Why don't I just go and tell them that ain't the love of Christian? What you're doing is you're a thief, you're wrong. You, 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 you're disrespectful, 
is wrong. I don't care that you don't like somebody or you say you hate that person. The Bible says you ought to love that person. The Bible says we ought to love our enemies. Uh, we ought to pray for them. Uh, we ought to do things for them. We ought to ask God to protect them and forgive them and, and, and all that stuff the Bible teaches us. And, and if we're supposed to be bona fide Christians, we ought to do those things, but So here I am this morning, and I'm going to try to be as bona fide as I can be. I'm going to put it straight forth to you, and if I, if I upset you, good. If I make you mad, <laughs> talk to the pastor. No, 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 no. He has a lot of trouble. But, but, but talk to him. I tell you, we do talk to him. You upset with something I said this morning? Fall on your knees at night, this evening, or sometime today, and then talk to the Lord. He'll straighten me out. I know he will, but that's why I ain't never been a preacher, because my wife prayed to straighten me out. I don't know what, I, no, I'll forgive her for it, but <laughs> I don't think she even meant for me to be here. But she wanted him to straighten me out. So he did. Because I was lost, so going the wrong way. Walking down the wrong road. Let's get to the message. Let's get to the message. I feel it coming. I feel it coming. Yeah, yeah. 610, first to 610, say, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of, of evil. And some people crave for money, having wonderful forms of faith and pierced themselves with many grief. Paul, Paul here is telling Timothy to stay away from those who just want to make money from preaching and from those who, who, who are, are straying away from sound doctrine of God's word. In other words, telling the good news. He also tells Timothy not to get in war or strife with people about his word. In other words, this particular section of 1 Timothy or, or is written directly to Timothy. It was basically meant to be a private lesson, a private teaching to Timothy who Paul considered to be his son. Not just a brother in Christ, but he considered Timothy to be his son. And he wanted Timothy to be a man of power. And so he was telling him to stay away from those who, who strive to, to just make money. And it's a shame, a disgrace, but you know today, in this time, we have preachers, teachers of God's word who, who are famous on TV, wealthy, but they are doing just for the money. And you can quote me, that's my honest feeling. Not all of them, but some of them are just out there. They found a way that they're too lazy to really go get a real job and to work, but they found a way if I can just figure out a way to use God's word, I can talk about his word, and people will bring me money, and I'll use it, and they do that. And there are so many people, because the words say there are those that are trying to teach and, and they'll tell you and they'll just scratch your little itch in your ear to make it sound good, make it feel, make you feel good, and you give them that money and they are leading you to hell. I told you I felt it coming. And, 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 and because of this thing, this thing we call money, and we live on this earth, we have to have money if we're going to live here on this earth. It's a necessity. And that's why it feels like we never least. Somebody heard somebody say they had enough. But, but, but for me, it seems like I, 
I know have enough. It's true. I want to see you at the church if you have enough. Cause I need some. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like y'all laughing, but I'm serious. I got some bills that that, that need to be paid. I got a desire. I want my own truck again, and so I need about forty thousand dollars just for down payment. So I need to talk to you. But 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 let 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 let's just see. See, we all need money. We all need it. But money in itself, used in the right way, is a good thing. That's not the problem. The problem is that word L O V E. The love of it becomes to be a problem for. Christians, unbelievers. In other words, it becomes a problem for anybody who falls in love with him. Yeah. And I'm not going to try to be like a theologian. I ain't been to. I heard somebody say to the cemetery. <laughs> I ain't never been there. Probably would never. I just said, no, I said I would stop saying I ain't gonna never do something. But in my mind right now, I probably ain't gonna never go there to learn God's word. But I've learned never to say no. <laughs> Soon it seems like I'd say no. <laughs> I ain't up. Ain't up there. Yeah, I ain't up there. Just go along and try to stay, stay focused on, on, on my messages and stay along. I don't want to miss that at moment, but this is important. So, 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 Paul told, told, told Timothy to stay away from people who are trying to make money only for preaching God's word and from those that want to argue with him about God's word. So see here, look here. My, you get my little me over this go here. Y'all heard the song. Y'all just like me. Y'all was out there listen to the, the music. Y'all ain't always just listen to gospel music. But there's a song that says money, money, money. Right? So some of this stuff y'all gonna hear is gonna be the lyrics from that song. The lyrics be gonna say, I ain't on the computer. Money, money, money. Some people got to have it. Some of us <laughs> really need it. Some people do anything have for you. Of course, me, what have you done for you? Maybe a better question is since maybe you haven't done anything for it, but what will you do for you? Yes, money. Money, money. Some people will do anything for you. They will lie for you. Some people will cheat for you. Some people will steal for you. Some people, yeah, yeah, brother. Some people will kill for you. Some people will sell their only body for you. Yes, some people will sell their very soul if they can get. Or some people will make a deal with the devil if they can have all the money that they have. They'll give their soul to the devil if they can just have the money. I remember watching a movie one time about this baseball player, and he was a, he didn't have no talent. He wasn't good. He sold his soul that the devil would would, would give him talent and stuff to where he could be great, and the devil blessed him. I shouldn't have said it that way. But the devil blessed him and gave him all this talent. And, and, and he would play, he would play for the New York Yankees. And he played right field. And, and, and the devil would have blessed him. But they got to the World Series in the championship game, the last game, the court game, and the devil wanted him to lose the game. And he refused. Because 
he loves himself those Yankees. And as the ball was hit away for the last out, he was running, and he looked like a young man running, and, and the devil realized that he wasn't going to listen to him, and the devil took his blessing away. Now, he was, as he was running, he actually aged. And he was barely getting there. The whole night, he was like a old man. But he loved those Yankees so much. His love for the Yankees overcame the devil followed. He drove and caught that ball. In. I can't remember the movie, but, but I, I remember that scene in that movie. I don't want us to get to the point that we are so in love with money that we forget who we are to be serving. Who is most important to us. See, in my job, I'm, I'm glad I have some friends. About like I have a young preacher friend, and me and him get into it occasionally about, about driving and work and stuff because he loves himself some money. He works hard. He'll stay away from home three and four months at a time in order to make some money and it cost him his marriage. And I used to tell him all the time, money is good, but money is not the most important thing. It's not. God should be your number one priority in your life. I don't care who you are, what, where stage of life you're in, God should be number one. That same young man, me no matter, fuss and fight about where the church sits, where y'all sit in the pastor's life. He asked me this question. God's number one, I won't forget that. God is my number one. He said, you made a promise to take your child somewhere. And as you're getting ready to walk out the door, Sister Evans calls and say, Mama died and I need you to come. He said, what do you do, Pastor? I said, I go ahead and take my child where well, I told him I was taking He said, but, 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 but the, the ladies in the church called and said, Mama died and they need you to come and talk to them. I said, I'll talk to them when I get back. Amen. In other words, what I'm trying to tell y'all, God is my number one, but my family is my number two. My family is my number two. My family become before my job, but the job is what makes me take care of family. But my family is my number two. Now that's time my job takes priority, but it's only because my family understands that I have to go make us some money to take care and keep the roof over our head, so it's an understanding. But my family is still number two because I'm going to the job because I'm there to take. So me and my friend, we thought about that. And what I used to tell him was he was just like I am an associate pastor. I said, when you were, at this time I was pastor. I said, when you become a pastor, then come and talk to me about what I supposed to do. Because I'm listening to my number one. And if I can't take care of my family, how can I take care of his people in his church? But yeah, some people will do anything for it. Some people will kill their very own parents for money. Like I said, they're alive, cheat, steal, kill. Sell their own body. Some people sell their own soul. And, 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 and so therefore, the root for the love of money becomes a root of all sorts of people. Money and money and money. I got to have the money and I'll do whatever it takes to get that money. And despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary,
sanctuary, most people still believe if I have just enough money, I will be happy. But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you can have all the money in this world and it will not buy you one second of happiness. You can be one sad, unhappy person with a lot of money. God rest my cousin's soul. I heard him say one time, I would just like to have enough to find out for myself. Money cannot bring you happiness. Money, oh, I'll have to go get it. Money cannot buy you your love. Yeah, it can't get past No, it cannot. You ever have a person lying to you? But they truly don't love you. Because if you don't have no money, the day you don't have none, they are out of there. Go on to the next person that they think will get them have some of that money. So there's two things I ought to learn already this morning. It ain't gonna buy you happiness, and it ain't gonna buy you money. You can have all the money in the world. And if you got the wrong type of sickness or disease, <laughs> the money ain't going to fix it. Because that's what God better be your number one. He's the only person I know that can overcome anything. Yeah. So that's why I hear it here, here in, the, in, in, the, in God's word, Solomon over in the three philosophers, three philosophers, we all know where I'm trying to go. He says, 5 and 10, he says, He that has, he said, He that loves silver shall not be satisfied with silver. So that's another translation than what I read earlier. Nor he that loves abundance with increase. This to his benefit. See, see, he, he, he's right. It's everything, y'all tell me, y'all don't believe it. Everything that we need. Everything you need is in this Bible. But the problem is, we are too lazy to go pick it up and read. We claim we are too busy to read. Some of us don't even believe that it's real. But it is. Yeah, man wrote it. God in his Some of it is not even translated right, but it's still God's word. That's why when you go and pray to your number one, Lord, help me understand your word. He will give you the understanding that you need for that present time. Because next week when you go back and read that same scripture, it will tell you something. Same scripture. But God is giving you what you need for that time. Because if he gave you everything that was in this Bible, your brain probably would explode. Because you couldn't have it. So he gives you what you need when you need it. But us people, we people, we just love, love, Anybody here that don't love money? No? Just, 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 I'm going to you too. Anybody here that don't love, let me put it another way, that'll help y'all. Anybody here that don't love having money in their pocket? Oh, I saw one hand. Okay. I don't know. All right. But that's good. Because if you don't love having money or you don't love money, you have truly come to the point that you know who to rely on. The best times. Oh, I have no home and no one be going home all week and I might have had $20 in my pocket when I left. But I 
wasn't concerned because all I know is that I knew I was going to get to eat. My truck wasn't going to run out of gas, so I was all right. And God always supplied my needs. Because truly, if I left home and I leave home and my wife would call her home, 500 miles away, but she calls, baby, you got any money? <laughs> Five times to ask from 500 miles away. <laughs> yeah, baby, I got $20. She says, I'm going to put some on your cash card. That's you know when the cash card is I bet that's not all good. No, 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 no. See, that's why I know there is a God that loves you because he always finds a way to supply your need. I even once had a friend was coming the opposite way that I was coming. I had stopped for the night at a rest here. Yeah. We got to talking on the phone. He said, where you at? I said, I want to rest there on me on 45. And this is, he said, okay, I'm coming that way. He pulled into the rest area, parked by me, got out, we talked for a minute, he grabbed his wallet, went in the wallet, and handed me two hundred dollars. Just because. I didn't ask him. We had had a conversation, but he did. God supplied the need. That's why I'm telling you. Keep God your number one. Amen. Keep him your number one. But the, the text says some people love money so much that they lose focus and they forget about God and they'll do whatever it takes to try to get some money. See, 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 Solomon observed that those who spent their, their, their lives obsessing with seeking after money would, would never found their happiness that, it, that, that money promised. See, he understood, understood that fact that people think money promises happiness and, 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 and don't. Because that wealth, that, that, it prom prom that, 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 that money promise and the happiness and all that, it, it only brings, this is what that, that brings. It attracts freeloaders. If you had a lot of money, brother, Evan, you'd have a bunch of freeloaders hanging around you. <laughs> no, they're freeloaders. <laughs> they're calling themselves freeloaders. <laughs> it attracts thieves. It will cause you to have some sleepless nights in fear. Because now you're worried about <laughs> where your money at, whether, whether the bank is really holding your money, whether your uh, account is not stealing from you. You know what I mean? I think they have a lot of money. There are people that they have trusted to keep their money and invest their money or the ones that stole their money. And Kareem Abdul-Zabar made a lot of money in his life. And when he retired, he was absolutely broke because the person that handled him his money stole his money. I use him because he's one of my favorite basketball players of all time, and I, 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 I heard that about him, I was so sad. He, could, he couldn't really retire. He could stop playing basketball, but he had to get a job coaching because he needed some money to keep over his lifestyle. And see, in the ultimate in the end, like I say, we, if you're wealthy and rich, you can't take it with, with, with you. I heard this one man, he was going to take his money with him. So he told his wife, I want all my money to be carried with me. She said, okay, baby. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. So when he died, 
She went to the bank and got him a cashier's check. But it really wasn't any good. Put it in a nice box. Put it in a casket with it. Buried it. And the night after he was buried, she was born. Monday morning, she went to the jewelry store. That ring that he wouldn't buy her, she bought it. That car that she wouldn't she bought it. That house that she really wanted, she bought it. Because she was trying to get that happiness that money really came by. But she did have enough certain on that she couldn't take it with her. So she was going to spend it <laughs> before she went. My mom says sometimes, she said everything she got when she dies, she lived it to the person that is taken care of when she died. Who will ever is caring for me? I tell my wife this all the time. 
because I see stuff on TV and the news. I tell her that if she ever gets tired of it, and she wants that house that we got, that we live in, and God bless us with a nice home. Don't kill me, just tell me that she's tired of me and I will leave. Because for me, I could care less about that house. And she knows because I've tried to get her to sit. Number five, working for God is more important than money and 
six, we need to learn to share what we have. Most of us, we won't share what we have. Share. We'll multiply the Holy Ghost to you and God baptize. Jesus on my mind for Christian, we won't share. We'll find a good job. We'll find a good investment. But we won't share that thought with our friend that we know that it is. We won't keep that investment to ourselves. Like if we tell somebody, we ain't making money we want. We won't share. We won't share. I'm a close. Money, money, money. Money, money, money. Matthew 16 and 26 says, For what is it that a man profits? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? But, but in Hebrews 13 and 6 it says, But love money be Wait, good, good, good. No, I don't see. I got a guy that written down on paper. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God said He would never leave us. God said He would never leave us. Nor would He abandon us. 6 24 in Matthew, it says. No one can say, sir, two masters. It will get you in trouble when you love them. For you either hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and mother. You can't. I know quite a few people. That would be on their deathbed bed. And they would not get up and go to church. But Monday morning, they on their way to their job. Why? For the love of that money. Won't go to church. One thirty, then friend come by and said, "Hey, you want to go to dinner? <laughs> Give me five minutes. I'll be out of bed or something." <laughs> I think he might have went off a super 
facility, you had to go back to work that day. I thought, I don't I can't remember. But anyway, I worked for a company called Super Show because I was told I did it. So stupid in your life, put my good post on the show. Worked all week. Brought her home a seventeen dollar check so we got paid for the mission. Don't look at me like I'm serious. My son told me to frame, but we need to accept it. But we got cap tips here and out there, so that helped help to stand. But my check for my commission working all week was seventeen dollars. On the way to work, to the LAX airport, on my way to work, drive my car to go get the van and go pick up the people. I was on my way to work, and I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I need a job. Always ask the Lord for what you truly want. Because if I knew that then, I would have asked for a little bit more than just a job. <laughs> but I was needed a job, and I told the Lord that. And I could, then I got bold. I really got real bold. I said, Lord, I need this job. I need it. No, that ain't what I said. But I, I need this job, and, and I don't want to go look for it because if I go look for it, and get it, I'm going to say I did it in my power. But I need this job to come in a way that I know for sure, without a doubt, that you are the one that gave me this job. Picked up this guy on a Saturday at the airport. We went on a little loop around, and I was trying to, because you, you want to get many people on the van, you have to own my And I said, man, ain't hey, nobody. And I said, I'm going to take you on. And I asked him, of course, I said, you can go to the interstate or we can go to the road. This was a Saturday. He said, well, you're the professional. You make the decision. I said, so we hop on the interstate. He said, I'm going to go to the road. from the LAX airport to Burbank airport. So we flew out of Burbank and that place gone. Got over there, this man says to me as he was getting off the van. Here I am working on a Saturday, not a dime. He says, you can get a $5 ticket. Yeah, that sounds good. I could have used it in the McDonald's bag. You can get a nice filet of fish sandwich and fries and a soda for $5 bag. He said, oh, you can get two pieces of passports. Your choice. And I sit there in the chair and I kind of laugh a little bit to myself. I said, well, I'll take the two pieces of passports. But at the point then, I was thinking, when I get home this evening, I can take my kids to Pizza Hut. They were large pieces. I said, hey, we can use one passport for a large pizza of the day and another for another time. We wouldn't be stuck, but we would be poor. He said, I was hoping you say that. He said, when you go to Pizza Hut, look at the guy in the white shirt with the tie on. And here's my business card. If you think you would like to do that, give me a phone call. Not only did the Lord provide me with the job, he provided me with a job in managing. Brought me in as an assistant manager. With what, what did I ask him to call for? A job that would supply the needs for my family. That's why I say, if you want, sometimes I should have said, Lord, I want this job. That a lot of these from my family, I don't want to make six or eight kids. Instead of just five. God is a good God. See, see, y'all, y'all, we serve a God that in the beginning he stood out on nothing. Spoke to nowhere. And created the heavens and the earth. He spoke again, and that was light and darkness. He spoke again, that was solid ground, and that was well ground. He spoke again, and he created some animals. Then he said, this is how important you are to him. Then he 
said, he could have spoken, but he said, let us create man in our own image. See, you are the image of God. He, pre he took time and got down on his knees and molded you and, and shaped you and formed you into what you would be his image. Then he bent over and breathed into you the breath of life. He loves you so much, and yet though we neglect him. We won't even take time in the morning to, to follow our knees and say, Lord, thank you for waking me up some morning. I know we do it sometimes, but we're not consistent. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we go and lay down. We try to, I, I, I'm just, I just lay there in the bed. Hey, Lord, forgive me. Thank you for this day. Why can't I fall on my knees and pray to him? But he took time to send his precious son, Jesus Christ, to walk on this earth to teach me and show me and then die for me. A no good life. Okay, I'll be a lot more Cheer. Thief. And some of the other bad things I probably did too. Amen. But he did that for me. He sent Jesus. I know he sent it for y'all, but he sent it for me. That's why, my brother, I feel in love with him. Because he loved me first. Do you love him? Do you know him? Don't just say, my wife used to tell me, I used to tell her all the time I love her when we first got married. She said, stop saying no meaning this word. Do you truly love him? Amen. Then why is you living for him the way you ought to? Yeah, I told y'all I'm a little salty this morning. And maybe I need to get some more salt and some pepper. Well, y'all can get all on flavor. I want you to understand, Jesus Christ gave his life for us. And all he really has is that we listen to his word and we do our very best to walk in his word. And when we fall, ask for forgiveness and start back to walk in. The door of the church. The door to the kingdom of heaven is over. Will you stand? Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and ask. Do you know your father?